Well, Paddy had been retired for 25 years. Um, she retired out of the business. She came back in a show written for her by Dick Fosbrook or Dane Hollywood Night in the Ukraine. So she did a year in Hampstead of that show and had no idea that the This Is Your Life team had it in their minds to do her as a subject. So then it was how do we get Paddy to do it? She's a very sus woman. So they said, well, we'll say, because we're a theatrical family, they wouldn't be surprised uh, to hear that, oh, we'd like to do a documentary on people with unusual backgrounds. And my mother came from Travelling Showman, 500 years of Travelling Showman Fairground. So they said, we'd like to do a documentary of that. And Paddy said, oh, yes, all right, we'll do that. We'll film it at Chessington Zoo. Oh, well, if you must, you must, she said. Uh, she said to Alfredo, would you come along to it? And he said, well, no, darling, I, I'm really not interested. Now, of course, he had to say that because he had to be at the studios while they started the production of This Is Your Life. So they had a big row. And she said... Well, that's not nice, she said. I do all the things that you asked me to do. One thing I've asked to do, and you won't do it. So they had a big round. So the car picks her up to Chessington Zoo to do this thing. Now, she doesn't know, but Alfred and Eamon are in a ghost train where they filmed it. So they bump into her car, and she goes, Ooh! And then Alfred comes around and she said, oh, you came to the filming of my documentary. And Alfred says, yes, and I brought a friend of mine. And with that, Eamon comes out and said, yes, because tonight, Paddy O'Neill, this is your life. You thought you were coming here to do a thing. And she was so genuinely shocked that she actually said, shit, and they bleeped it. And she was more annoyed that they thought that she had said something worse. But it was a genuine surprise. But they had to make such circuitous routes to get her to believe that it was a real documentary because my mother was very sus at things going on. It was six weeks keeping the secret. I wasn't living at home, my sister was. Um, and it was more difficult for my sister because she was here the whole time. And we'd live, they'd be living everyday life where they'd watch This Is Your Life because it was being broadcast at the time. And we, we always watched it because invariably it was someone we knew. And Paddy once, it was about two weeks before we did the taping, and we knew it was going on. Uh, and it was about two weeks before we were watching, and it was a friend of ours, it was Henry Cooper, I don't know who it was. And Paddy just said, oh, I wonder if they'll ever do me. And of course, we all froze. But she never sussed it. They don't tell the subject anything. So when Eamon said to her and presented her with a book, yes, because tonight, Paddy O'Neill, this is your life, and we're whisking you away to the New London studios where you'll meet lots of friends. Well, they're all told then nobody's to say anything to the subject. So she's in a limousine with Eamon. Nobody's allowed to say anything. We're all in a green room. She doesn't know how many of the family or friends are there. And we're all waiting. And then we're told to be very quiet because they're coming down the corridor. And of course, if you hear a voice, you'll think, oh, that's a friend of mine. That's a thing. That's a that. So she's still in total shock. And we're told to be very quiet. Now, we've been there for four hours because we've had rehearsals and camera runs and everything without the subject. And we're in the green room with a bar. So we've got Alfred's family, Paddy's family, who are from 500 years of travelling showman fairground, with an open bar. So we're all there again. And then the poor little Roy Fewins, who was this lovely little Irish man who was Eamon's assistant, who was talked like that, was... Um, oh, everybody has to be very quiet now because Miss O'Neill is coming through the corridor. So we'd have to be terribly quiet. And we're all going... <coughs> and you could hear this. What's that noise? She's saying, what's that noise? 
um, the subject's already there. You're brought out in a certain order. Of course, Alfred's the first one to come on. And then Eamon would say, well, we couldn't keep the secret from your family. Of course, they're here tonight. Your son, Gareth, and your daughter, Danny. Um, so you're watching it on the monitors behind the set, and you're seeing this poor woman's reaction, which is, what, now, is this real or is it a joke? Because she really didn't know whether it was for real or not. Oh, bless them. Paddy's sisters, my two aunts from the fun fair, were used to talking in front of a microphone on a fairground and calling people on on a ride, but never been in front of a camera before in their life. And poor Daisy was so nervous that what they do is they ask you about a funny story or they talk to you and they say, well, we'll ask you about that story. And they'll put cue cards up and say, well, this is the story you told. And we'll put little lines here to remind you of what to say. So, hello, Paddy. It's lovely that they've done this for you. Well, poor Daisy, my aunt, there's a woman behind the camera showing cue cards and was leaning the cue cards like that. And Daisy, head was going like that. So she looked like she'd been hung from a tree and cut down. And she didn't have the sense to say, could you hold them up straight? So as the woman's going sideways, Daisy's going more sideways. And her sister, Betty, is next to her, Paddy's sister and Daisy's sister, Betty, was mouthing the words off the cue card was going while Daisy was talking because these people are not in not used to being in front of a camera and of course this is your life team must have been so used to people who'd never been in front of a camera before but it was so funny to us and you can see Paddy howling with laughter knowing what they're going through oh Johnny and Fanny Craddock bless their hearts family friends of ours for years so when Alfred and Paddy had their TV show, Alfred Mark's Time, they did one sketch where Paddy was playing Fanny Craddock and she was in a ball gown with a tiara, frying sausages over a candelabra on a grand piano. She takes the uh, tiara off her head, Paddy does, and chops the parsley with it. So Alfred is playing Johnny Craddock, Fanny's husband, who always had a monocle looked like Fred Emily but never said a word in all Fanny Craddock shows so when we were doing the story and Fanny came out and said and yes and Paddy Paddy was wearing a ball gown and chopped the parsley with the tiara and frying sausages on a candelabra poor Johnny Craddock was never given a line in the this is your life thing but when it came to the actual taping he piped up and when Fanny Craddock said and of course, Alfred, my dear, played Johnny. And Johnny just looked at the camera and went, not much of a part. And it brought the house down. And Fanny looked at it and said, that wasn't scripted. How dare you? But he got the biggest laugh of the night. The big reveal at the end, her brother Tommy, it nearly didn't happen. Because her brother Tommy had emigrated to Australia 30 years before. Uh, he had a very bad back complaint. So when they said they're doing Paddy's This Is Your Life, he said, yes, I'm going to be there. But then he found out he couldn't fly for 22 hours, whatever it is, from Australia. Um, and Alfred, my father, said, you can't do it without Tommy because she will by then expect him to be there as the big reveal. We'd seen the show enough times and know that was the most important person. She hadn't seen him for all that time. So Tommy said, I can't do it because I can't sit in an airplane seat. So the production team said, right, they hired four rows in first class of a 747 and put a flat bed on and said, uh, right, so you'll be able to fly flat the, for the whole way to England and we'll have someone there to look after you. He said... I don't want to think, people think there's a corpse lying in there. No, no, there'll be curtains, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, OK. So over Tommy came. Thank God, because that was the piece de resistance. They put him up in a hotel for two weeks, like they do. Uh, I think it's the Savoy. 
And then just as he was leaving, he fell down these great big stairs at this house and broke his leg. So he stayed here for another four months, which is perfect for Paddy. She loved it, but not what they were expecting. <laughs> she couldn't believe how genuinely people had remembered little stories about her that had really gone out of her mind. When people say, I'll never forget when you did this and I'll never forget when you did that. Uh, you quite forget the impact you've had on people and I think that's what she took from it most of all was oh I didn't know that that meant so much to this one and that one and that they remembered this and that and the other that's what that's what that show did really it brought together all these little elements but did it in a public format this is your life within our industry was a very high honour uh, to have bestowed upon you. We knew a lot of the subjects that had been done. In fact, as you know, my um, mother and father were guests on many of them um, because they were friends of ours. But there was always something special about that you had been chosen as a subject to do that because they had an awful lot of choice of people to do. And when you felt the love from everyone, not just the audience when you were taping it, but the people who were involved in the production of it and the researchers who bothered to go for the stories and the elements of your life that meant something to other people and to you and would, meet, would translate to other people, it meant they put an awful lot of effort into it and love into it. And when you found yourself the subject of it, it was, it was ever such a big honour, and they felt that a lot.